What up, gang? Listen, if you are a budding entrepreneur, if you have a new product, if you have a clothing line that you'd like to promote, let's do it. We'll put it right here on the YouTube channel. Let's talk behind the scenes, man. Hit me up. My email address is Zaza genetics973 at gmail.com or you can hit me on discord instagram dm um just let me know like comment share subscribe you heard me? yeah you know turn up the leaf blower in the long boy he smoked the sour should have been a hippie should have been a shower bread with no dread black cock oh yeah Another thing, don't forget to join the Discord. What up, gang? It's your boy Zop back with another banger. Hey, today I really want to react to some good resources that you guys can refer to uh, in between videos. So, uh, one of my favorite resources and um, one I always play in Discord for the guys uh, is the Amiibo Sisters. And although it is more of an elementary sort of vibe, it gets you right where you need to be when it comes to adding new tools to your toolbox. So without further ado, shout out to the Amiibo sisters. Let's get straight into it. So I have a confession to make. For my classroom, I always wanted a hairless guinea pig. They sell them at some pet stores, but they can be really hard to find. And while I doubt they do so well in the wild, their genetics are fascinating. And so are guinea pigs. We spend quite some time on LOL cats, but we'd spend even more time if someone would make a funny guinea pig site. Most guinea pigs have hair. This is because of their DNA. DNA makes up genes, and the guinea pigs received genes from both their mother and their father. An allele is a form of a gene, and often represented by a letter. In this case, we'll use the letter H for hair. A hairless guinea pig has two recessive alleles for the trait of having or not having hair. A recessive allele is usually represented by a lowercase letter or allele. By recessive, it means that the allele will not usually show up. The only way it will show up is if there is no dominant allele present. A dominant allele is represented by a capital letter and Absolutely. The only way a recessive allele shows up is in a homozygous recessive situation where there are going to be two lowercase letters. So, carry on. And it's an allele that will show up. Think of it as dominating. So, a hairless guinea pig does not have a dominant allele for hair, and that's why the recessive trait not having hair shows up. A hairless guinea pig's genotype, that's the genetic makeup of an organism, can be... All right, so, gang, language, language, vocabulary, language is everything. We know how important it is, so let's take notes. Uh, several super important words that we use. Um, allele, dominant, recessive, genotype. And the video just started, so take notes, take notes, take notes. To be represented is a lowercase little h, little h. A guinea pig that does have hair can be represented as a big H, big H, or a big H, little h. See, it only takes one dominant allele, a capital H, for a trait to show up. That dominating allele means that the recessive allele is hidden. Now, we're not quite done with the vocab here. A genotype of big H, big H, or little h, little h, is considered homozygous. The root in this word means same, and they are the same case. Big H, big H, those are both capital letters, and little h, little h, those are both lowercase letters. So big H, big H is called homozygous dominant because of the capitals, and little h, little h is homozygous recessive because of the lowercase. A genotype of big H, little h. Is there you go. So you're learning the importance of distinguishing heterozygous versus homozygous alleles. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I feel like my analytics are showing me half the people at least 
are not subscribed half my viewers so if you are a recurrent viewer and you are not yet subscribed please hit the subscribe button make sure you check that notification bell and i'm gonna bring you this mail all right that way you always know every time i got some new bangers on the way man let's get right into it it's considered heterozygous the root in this word means different because their letters are different cases. One is a capital and one is a lowercase. If I were to show you a guinea pig with hair, would you know its genotype? Well, you would know it's not little h, little h, because if it was little h, little h, then it would be hairless. But remember, a guinea pig with hair, it could be big h, big h. Homozygous recessive, little h, little h. It couldn't, in order for it to be hairless, there couldn't be any dominant traits, and the dominant trait represents hair right that big h represents hair that's why it looks a little furry so um the only way we can have a hairless guinea pig is um if it's going to show up with two little h's homozygous recessive no big h because the big h which is the hair will always mask and cover the recessive little h or big h little h we don't really know we could do a test cross to eventually determine this, but you can't tell just by looking at the guinea pig. Now, if we had a hairless guinea pig, we do know for sure that it's little h, little h, because if it did have a capital letter, even one, that dominating allele would take over and it would have hair. So let's try a monohybrid cross. The root mono means one because it focuses on one trait, in this case, hair. And that means a Punnett square would need to be created like this with four squares. In our cross, we are going to cross two heterozygous guinea pigs. Step Make sure you're taking your notes. This is the cross that we're going to focus on primarily a monohybrid in the early stages of our breeding career. Step one, first figure out the genotypes of the parents. Heterozygous means big H, little h. Step two, place one parent along the top of the Punnett square, outside of the boxes like this, and place the other parent along the left side of the square, outside of the boxes like this. Step three, cross them. For formatting purposes, we always put the capital letter first. The results that you get in the squares would be the offspring. There you go. That's a three to one ratio, right? That little h, little h that shows in the bottom, one out of three of the offspring are going to be homozygous recessive for hairless. All right, so. The babies. Now, if I were to ask you the genotypes of the babies, you could list them out. One big h, big h, two big h, little h, and one little h, little h. I could even turn that into a genotype ratio of one homozygous dominant to two heterozygous to one homozygous recessive, or a percentage. 25% are homozygous dominant, 50% are heterozygous, and 25% are homozygous recessive. Well, what if I asked about the phenotypes? What does that mean? I like to think that pheno sounds like physical. So the phenotype would be the physical traits of that organism. And in this example, it's whether they have hair or not. Now remember, any babies that have a capital H have a dominating allele, and they will have hair. So the babies that are big H, big H, or big H, little H, they have hair. So three of them here, the one big H, big H baby, and the two big H, little H babies, they all have hair. The homozygous recessive baby, which was little h, little h, that baby has no dominant allele present. So this little guy would be hairless. So you could say the phenotype ratio is three have hair to one that's hairless. Or a phenotype percentage could be 75% hair, 25% hairless. One thing to emphasize about Punnett squares is that they are predictions. These are probabilities. This means it's not necessarily exactly what you're going to get. For example, it's a probability that a child has a 50-50 chance of being born a boy or a girl. But we all know families that only have children that are girls or families that only have children that are boys. Probabilities are predictions. 
I'm telling you, this is an amazing resource. And like I said, um, don't be discouraged by the animations, right? Uh, because it's the knowledge and the tools that you're adding to your toolbox. The Amiibo Sisters is a tremendous resource, man. I can't stress that enough. Another reason to love biology, it's exciting. Well, that's it for the Amiibo Sisters, and we remind you to stay curious. All right, gang. That's the Amiibo Sisters, man. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed that little quick video. Learned some things about Punished Squares. We got a nice list of language and vocabulary in there. Let's backtrack. What words did we hear? Um, allele, dominant, recessive, genotype, phenotype, um, Punished Square, right? And um, we understand Punished Squares are solely for the purpose of probability and predicting possible ratios, percentages, um, and we're going to work with a monohybrid Punished Square, simple four box single trait to begin with. And um, just think of some of the traits that you may be working with coming up and put them in the comments. Let me know some of the traits that you'd like to work with uh, in your initial Punnett Square activity when you start to get your hands and eyes on experience with selection, man. All right. Stay tuned. We got some more videos in store. I'm going to try to drop a banger for you every day this week. I'm going to try my best. Much love. Let me know what traits you will be using in our next Punnett Square selection activity. All right. I want to know in the comments. Drop it in the comments. Let me know. Make sure you like this video if you appreciate the content that I put out. It's an each one, teach one, QCE movement. QCE is quality, community, and education. We bring quality to this community through education. Much love to everybody who is pushing the agenda, spreading light, and fighting a good fight. Much love to my partners, my sponsors, my family, AC Infinity, man. Hit that code Team Zaza at checkout for a discount. And if you need some good foundation gear for these selection projects coming up, make sure you hit ZazaGenetics.com, man. The uh, discount is permanent, so much love to the gang. I appreciate y'all. Catch us on Discord after 9 p.m. pretty much any day. Catch us on Twitch, Zaza underscore Genetics. We'll be back on Clubhouse soon, so download the app if you don't have Clubhouse. And make sure you follow us on Instagram, Zaza.Genetics.Official. I didn't name myself Zaza. The people did, man. Much love to the gang. Till we meet again, man. I'm out of here.